Hey, welcome to another episode of Al's Garage. Today we are going to be changing a thermostat on a small block Chevy, specifically a small block Chevy on this 1956 GMC Resto Mod behind me. Uh, this is a truck that I restored and uh, ended up putting a uh, 327 in. So uh, the, uh, obviously the block is the same between the 327s and the 350s. I believe the 283s as well. So if you have a small block Chevy, this will apply to you. And we are going to replace the thermostat because one, it is leaking. The gasket seems to be uh, leaking. I've had some trouble trying to get the thing to seal up. Uh, I can drive it a half hour, hour, don't worry about it. Uh, but when I have it sitting here for a couple of weeks, I see that it uh, kind of seeps out and, and uh, runs out of the seal. So I'm gonna just pull the thing apart, reseal it. I'm gonna throw a new one in because I don't remember what temperature I had put in here originally. I didn't write it down. Uh, we're gonna be putting a 180 degree uh, thermostat in, which is a good middle of the road temperature to run these small block Chevy's, Chevy engines at. And uh, another thing that I'm working on is I just installed a temperature gauge that is a electronic rather than your uh, standard analog. And part of the reason is uh, that's kind of what they originally came with. So I want to try to get this thing re replaced so I know kind of where our baseline is, where 180 degrees is, where it should be running with a good thermostat. Let me show you what you need to use for this job and we will get started. So what we'll be needing for our job is a 180 degree thermostat, a new thermostat housing with gasket and two coarse threaded 3 8 inch mounting bolts. I'm putting a new housing in here because I think part of the reason it's leaking could be due to an uneven surface on the bottom of the uh, housing. So replacing this will eliminate that as a possible cause. We also need a 9 16th inch socket, extension and ratchet, gasket sealer, pan for the coolant that's going to drain out, and coolant. For this job, I'm using Prestone coolant that requires you to add distilled water, which is what's currently in this truck. Alright, here's our engine bay, and you can see where the thermostat housing is. You can see the two mounting bolts here, and you can also see where the coolant is leaking out onto the intake manifold. I'd previously used a blue RTV, which typically works for applications like this, but here I'll be using Permatex number no. 2 non-hardening gasket sealer. I've had success in the past with this number no. 2 non-hardening sealer, so I'll be using it again for this job. Because of the non-original engine application, the radiator drain is right over the top of a frame rail, which makes it difficult to drain without getting coolant everywhere. So what I'll do is I'll let the coolant drain out once I remove the two bolts that fasten the thermostat housing to the intake manifold. I'll use a screwdriver to separate the seal between the intake manifold and the thermostat housing. And here you can see the coolant starting to drain out. Now that enough coolant has drained out, we'll move the thermostat housing with the upper radiator hose over to the side so we can get access to the thermostat area. We're going to remove the thermostat and gasket material on that intake manifold surface. Since we are putting a new thermostat housing in, we won't need to clean the old gasket sealer off of this unit. At this point, we have the surface of the intake manifold where the thermostat goes nice and clean. I got lacquer thinner and a paper towel and was able to clean that surface off. And I also got the extra coolant out of the recessed areas of the intake manifold just trying to get everything clean. During this process I noticed the flat surface on the intake manifold was still a little bit gummy and smooth from the old gasket sealer. So I used 120 grit sandpaper and lightly sanded that surface to allow better adhesion once I put everything together. So we're ready to start putting our components together and I want to show you the best way to do so. We have our thermostat housing. You can see here it has a rubber lip that has a little bit of a ridge. I don't know if it'll uh, zoom in here for you, but 
This has a little bit of a ridge on it, uh, given that it's a rubber gasket. Uh, also, we have our thermostat, uh, which will go in here. Uh, it'll sit in this gasket uh, area. Then we will put our gasket on on top. Now, I came to this conclusion because I looked at these and I said, hmm, how does this go? And if I were to put the thermostat on the other side of the gasket here, uh, it would kind of, you know, bow this thing out and it just wouldn't seat as well as it is doing right here. So I uh, found that this was a better way to, to have it sit. Another note is the direction of the thermostat. Sometimes individuals who do this job can uh, put your thermostat in upside down. So here's a trick to have you uh, figure out, you know, next time you do this, not to, to do it backwards. Uh, one thing to think about is here's obviously a thermostat. How does it work? Well, it has a spring and it's essentially a valve. When it reaches a certain temperature, the spring will help open the valve and allow water to flow through. So if you have this in here, the hot, the, the water that's getting hot would need to be on the spring side so that the spring can allow it to open and have the water flow through. Well, if this is our housing that goes from the engine to the top of the radiator, we need the spring side to sit underneath so that the water can get in the engine water, I say water, but I mean coolant, so the coolant can get hot when the engine starts running, then the spring opens, then the water, which is hot, coolant, uh, goes up to the top of the radiator, goes through the radiator, then gets cool, and then goes around and continues the cycle. So I hope that is a easy way for you to ensure not to put your thermostat in backwards. What happens if you put it in backwards? Well, it's not the end of the world, but your car starts to run hot. Uh, you'll see it start to run hot, and then all of a sudden, it'll run normal temperature. And that is because if you have it, have it like this, it'll, you know, the engine temperature water uh, in, in the engine will get warm, uh, and then as it'll, it'll gradually make everything else get warm, so the, the coolant in your uh, radiator hose will get uh, at a temperature where it'll open this up, but it'll just take longer. So, uh, not a good practice though. It'll uh, probably, well, it won't guarantee to over overheat your engine, but it's a, always a good idea. Put your thermostat in the proper way. So, let's get to it. Let's put this in and uh, get this done. Well, it turned out I was wrong when explaining the order these parts go in. The thermostat actually goes in this slightly recessed area of the intake manifold here. Test fitting it confirms it fits nice and flush. So the next step is to put some gasket sealer on the surface, then install the thermostat, then add the gasket, then add gasket sealer to the thermostat housing, and install the housing. I start by hand tightening the two bolts, then alternate as I tighten down to ensure that there's even pressure on the gasket. I tighten to roughly 12 to 15 foot pounds as this is a aluminum intake. I don't want to strip the threads or shear off a bolt. From here, you're free to install your upper radiator hose and clamp. And that's all there is to it. Uh, really a pretty easy job. It's nice that it was on the top of the engine, or it only took two bolts. Uh, I'm going to let it sit without fluid for probably, I don't know, 12 to 16 hours, just to give that non-hardening gasket sealer enough time to cure and set. Uh, might be a little overkill, but I just want to make sure that it's not going to be leaking in the future. So that's about it. Uh, I hope this was helpful for you. Uh, if you like what you saw, go ahead and like the like button and subscribe and stay tuned for other videos. Thanks a lot. Mm -hmm.